All right. Man, that was incredible. I really enjoyed Harv Ecker. How about you? Is that good? That was great, wasn't it? You know, a lot of those things that he was uh, saying in there, I know you've heard us say once or twice, and he just had that package so well where he put that in a great, uh, you know, flow of material. So I really appreciated that, and I think it was really a perfect lead-in for the next conversation that we're going to have uh, right now. And for those of you that are here first time, brand new today, I want you to know that this might not mean as much to you as it will for those who have been here for three months or six months or a year. Uh, this presentation will mean a lot to those of you that have been here you know, a little bit longer because what you're going to see through the presentation perhaps are mistakes that you've made at certain points in your, your uh, involvement in this business that you can now see what you could have done and you won't make those mistakes again. And what will happen, for those of you that have been involved for a little while, is you're going to be able to dramatically accelerate your business. You really will, because it's going to give you a different glimpse and a different view of what you're capable of, of accomplishing. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to ask you, first off, uh, I want all the cell phones in the room off. And uh, I've been disappointed that I've heard quite a few of those ringing yesterday and today. And I don't want to hear them. I don't want to hear them at all, okay? You know, you're only here for a few hours, and I'm going to ask everybody in this room to pump up for 90 minutes, okay? It's going to be 5 o'clock before you're gone, and you might want to rearrange something, a ride, a flight, or something, because this is going to be really important information for you to hear. If you want to know really how to make the kind of money that people like myself make, or Russ, or Dave, or Jeff, or Lon, or Dan, if you want to know how to do that, this is really the key. This is Network Marketing 301. This isn't 101. This is 301. This is like your third year of college, all right? So you need to really listen closely, and I want you, I'm going to challenge you to stay engaged in this conversation for the next 90 minutes. And about uh, partway through this, I'm going to bring Lon up to give you a specific example right in front of your face today of what's going on in this particular concept of driving lines and finding lockers. And I'm going to use a couple of stories to make these points as I go through this today, so I want you to listen closely to that as well. All right, um, I want to talk before I get into driving lines about our mission. There has been some said and some thoughts spoken that, okay, we're so focused on our window of opportunity now that we seem to have lost our mission. That is not true at all, all right? Yes, the timing is different. Yes, we have gone through critical mass. Yes, we are now in the beginning stages of momentum. Yes, we will grow the company ten times in the next five or six years right here in the United States. All of those things are true. It's all going to happen. And the talking about that and focusing on that does not mean that we have lost our way in terms of our guiding principles, our moral foundation underneath this, that we're here to change people's lives, that this technology is going to revolutionize the whole world of nutrition. That is all going to happen. And I think it's been said best in this conference that the only way that we can truly change the world is we have to recruit millions of people. We've got to have millions of people involved in this company as distributors. We've got to have millions involved as leaders. We can't do it, you guys. There is no physical way possible for us to scan a billion people on this planet without literally millions of leaders. Millions and millions and millions of leaders. Our 700 blue diamonds are not going to get the job done. That is not nearly enough, not even close. And what you have to start to think about is this is different than anything that's ever happened really in network marketing. The biggest company is Amway at $5 billion or something. That is literally nothing compared to what this is going to accomplish. No one has ever been positioned like this. No one has ever had this kind of literally dominating technology like we have today. No one's ever had the, the, the capability or the credibility that we now possess with products and science and, and technology to go out there and really make this kind of a quantum leap. It's really a, a, like I told you on Thursday night about the fly buzzing against the window pane, trying to make a breakthrough, and it's utter futility. It's a strategy that will kill as the story goes, right? We have to think differently. We have to realize that we are truly in a completely different spot than anyone has ever found themselves in the entire history of this industry. That's truly where we're at. And what the lucky thing is, is that we all have this structure, this compensation structure that allows us 
to maximize that whole situation that's never occurred before. We have this way to leverage that situation to, uh, to success that no one's ever seen. This will literally break all the records. It'll be bigger. It's going to redefine what size and scope are in the network marketing arena and in the nutrition arena. We're going to do them both. We have to do them both. That's what goes together here. It's not one without the other. They're all one and the same. So I hope that that's clear. Let me bring up the first picture. Look at this guy. Actually, uh, you guys want to do it or maybe I'll do it. Okay, there we go. We got him. Okay. Now, I want you just to like cut the head off and just look at the body. If you were just looking at the body, how old would this guy be? 25? Maybe 30? He looks pretty good. How about the next one? He's got some good company. Okay. There he is on the beach. Let's go to the next one. Check these abs out. That's pretty good, isn't it? How old do you think he is? 65? 70? Let's we'll go to the next one. There it is. He's 80 years old. Does that look like most 80-year-olds 80 80 year that you know? That is completely different than most 80-year-olds that I know. Ken Dykewald talked about a revolution that's upon us here, that we're going to redefine the way people think about aging. What company do you think is going to do that? Okay? All right. How are we going to do that? How are we going to stay true to our mission unless we do this? I mean, do you want to age like this? Do you? I do. You know, I've got a picture of that right next to my desk. That's in my mental images now so that I can, like, decide and make a decision about how I'm going to age, what I'm going to be like. And I guess here's what my message is before getting into the, the meat of this thing on the money side. My message is regarding the mission. You have to live the mission. You have to do it. You cannot be out there smoking. It is totally incompatible with what we're doing, you guys. Okay? Listen, I have a lot of empathy for anybody who has that habit right now. I can empathize with how difficult that might be to stop that habit. Everybody's got difficult things they have to overcome. Everybody does, okay? If that's your cross to bear, beat it. Stare it in the face, scream at it, kill it, get it gone and get it out of your life. That's what you've got to do. That's what Harvard's just talking about. Become bigger than your problems. Change them. Rise above them. Get rid of them out of your life because those will be the limiting factors that hold you back in your progression, not only in this business, but in your life. Think about the example that you're setting. Think about who's watching you. In this business, everybody's watching you, okay? So get better. Peel your back off the mattress. We only had 33 people that peeled their back off the mattress at 6 o'clock this morning. Some of you were there. Most of you were not. Where were you? What were you doing? What were you thinking about? Okay, next conference, we're going to do it again. I expect every single person to be there with your workout clothes on at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen every conference from here on out. So plan on it. Bring your workout clothes next time and get ready to go for it, right? You have to make these decisions, guys. If you want to be really successful, then you need to live the mission. You've got to be the mission. It's got to be embodied in you and what you think about and how you act in your own life. This is my life. This is what I live every day. Okay? I'm going to work out. I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to take care of my nutrition. And I'm going to take care of my diet. Okay? And sometime, maybe at the next conference, we're going to do a full-blown intensive day on what you guys got to do to take care of your bodies, how you've got to eat in your life with your diet, and what you need to start getting serious about. And you can't really... Thank me, can you, for that dessert last night? Okay? I want you to know that that was not my order. My order was fruit only. Not the little fruit with the sticky, ugly thing, okay? It was the fruit only. The dinner was perfect. The dinner was perfect. Well, didn't you feel good after that dinner? Your stomach felt good. Your body felt good. You had energy. Okay? We'll have the d dessert fixed next time. I promise you. And we'll have the breakfast fixed. It was perfect, except for all those fat, laden, white, stupid croissants. All right? There won't be any more of that next time. I can guarantee you. All right. That is who we are as a company. We are about total wellness. And we live it, and we are the examples, and we preach it, and we do it. And that's it. Okay, let's go to the next one. 
where does the money come from? And I'm just going to hit the clicker here. I guess green means forward, right? Okay, good. I'm going to stop right there. You need to learn how to do what I'm going to show you right now. You need to take an 8.5, by sheet of paper, okay, and turn it sideways and be able to draw those two lines. Can everybody do that? Yes or yes? Okay? Draw those two lines. And you're going to see in a moment what that represents. These are the three parts of the compensation plan. How many times do you think I've drawn those lines on a piece of paper? Over 10,000 times. Over 10,000 times. And a lot of people said, wow, I'd be sick of doing that. That's right, remember? Boring but rich. You remember that? Okay, that's exactly what we're talking about. You do it over and over and over again. And then when you're so sick of doing it, you do it again and again and again. And when you're so sick of drawing those lines right there that you want to barf, then you go barf and you do it again and again and again and again. That's how boring we're going to be. Okay? I stopped after I got into the 20 million circle and I just did the math. And I just figured out that it was worth $20,000 every time I drew those lines. How many times are you going to draw those lines? A lot, right? That's right, that's what you're going to do. And that's not a place you build a house, a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk for this about this for just a moment right now. The front end of the plan is where we all started. Everybody in this room signed a distributor agreement at one point, became a distributor in the company, right? The middle part of the plan is where you become an executive. Everybody who is serious about this company must become an executive. You've got to move from distributor to executive or moving across the screen to your right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to then duplicate those leaders. And what it looks like in the end is just like that with all these things. Who's got a laser pointer, actually? I probably actually need to have one of those. So if you've got a good torch, grab one for me, okay? All right, so on the front end of the plan, as a distributor, you're going to make hundreds of dollars a month. Literally, that's what most people will make there is $100, maybe $200, maybe $500 if they're really good. In the middle part of the plan, you're going to make thousands of dollars a month. In the back end of the plan, you're going to make tens of thousands, or if you're really good, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Now, when I first joined AT&T in one of my prior lives, what happened is that we used to get a new compensation plan. And I wasn't there very long because they really, like, posed us there, so I was gone pretty fast. But, but when I was at AT&T, what we'd do on the first day of the year when they actually came out with their new compensation plan for the sales guys at AT&T, we would literally get a conference room, go in that conference room, and one person would read it, and they would highlight any of the bonuses. We'd take big pieces of paper and pin them all over the walls, all the way around this room, and we'd write down all the bonuses and how much we had to do to get those bonuses for all the products that we had to sell. We would then stop and analyze it and say, okay, where do we get the greatest return for our effort? What's the message that AT&T is trying to send to us as their salespeople through this commission structure this year? They're sending us a signal. Which products do they want us to sell? We knew which ones those would be by the amount of commission they assigned to those. And the more commission, the more uh, anxious they were for us to sell those products. So that's what we do. And we always made the most money because my team knew where the money was. If you don't know where the money is, you can't ever get there. You can't get the money if you don't know where it is. So where's the money in our plan? It's on the back end of the plan. Why are you doing this company, you guys? Are you doing it so you can have the bonus pool next month? Well, it's nice to get, but is that why you're doing this? No. Why are you here today? Why are you willing to make the personal, painful changes in your mind and in your heart and in your physical habits so you can live the mission? Why are you willing to do that? What is the reward? Long-term residual recurring income in your bank. You are doing this so you can be free. That is why you're doing this, okay? You are doing this because of freedom. So you can be free from anybody who's going to control your life in any way, shape, or form. So you can be free from disease. So you can be free from your mortgage. So you can be free to have an energetic body to move and live and do the things you want to do in your life. You're doing this so you can be free. So you never have to look at the price on a menu again, okay? You're doing this so you can be free. That's why you're doing this. The only way that you can get that freedom, you guys, in all aspects here, is you have to hit 
the back end of the plan. And specifically, you have to become at least a blue diamond in this company. That's what you've got to do to have that level of freedom and control in your life. So really, in essence, what we're talking about here is that you have to go from the front to the middle immediately. Anybody who's here that has not yet filed your letter of intent, you need to do that today. That's an executive ruby order. You get that done today. You get that LOI in today. You need to learn the term LOI. You need to like burn it in your brain. It's all about LOIs. It's yours first, and then it's everybody in your downlines. And so what you do is you move to the middle. And as soon as you become an executive, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to break people away from you. Now, some people say, why would I want to do that? I'm getting 9 to 15% when they're in my circle group. And if they break away, I only get 5. So why would I want to do it? It's not in my best interest to break them away. I'm just going to keep them under my own little wings. I won't even tell them they can become an executive. Fatal mistake, okay? Let me disabuse you of that thought process right now. You do not want to be doing that small thinking. You want every person possible to become an executive in your downline. Plenty of people will never go through the painful changes and change their mind to become an executive or beyond. You'll have plenty of distributors that will just stay there. You don't need to like encourage them to stay there. What you've got to do is encourage them to move on, to become a leader in this company. And so you create executives. And then you spin them out to the back end of the plan over here. And this is, you can hardly see that, I apologize. But you're going to take them from here in the middle and spin them over here. Just spin them out and spin them out and spin them out and fill up the back end of that compensation plan. The only way you can fill up the back end of that plan with all those 5% right there, the only way you can do that is you have to become an executive factory. You understand that? Say it with me. Okay, good. See? Harv's teaching me. Okay. You've got to become an executive factory. You've got to create a situation that just cranks them out. You've got to learn to manufacture executives. How do you do that? It's called the system. The system is what creates executives. And the faster and cleaner you can teach the system, and don't put the barnacles on it, and don't change it, and don't slow it down going through the water. Let it glide. Let it be smooth. Don't change anything, right? Follow the system. That's all you have to do. And you will create executive after executive after executive. When we look at the commissions that come from doing this, they're significant, right? On the front end of the plan, let's just, let's just say for, for, uh, for grins that you made $100,000 in a month. Okay, let's just say that you did that. And these slides are just mine. Okay, these aren't the company slides. I'll do the financial disclaimer right now, all right? These have not been sanitized through the sales prevention department. Okay? This is just the straight poop, you guys, okay? I'm telling it to you straight. I am not going to pull one single punch at all today. I'm going to hit you right between the eyes right now. You're going to know exactly what you've got to do to make it big in this company. You can make a $100,000 check in this company. And if you were to do that and you broke your check down by front, middle, and back, then you can see where the money really comes from. About $1,000, if you're in the performance bonus pool, could come from the front end of the plan. You will not get that if you're not in the performance bonus pool. It'll be like 100 or two, okay? In the middle part of the plan, you'd make, say, like 4,000. But on the back end of the plan, you'd be making $95,000. $95,000 out of a $100,000 bonus check that I get comes from the back end of the plan, from duplicating myself, right? What is the message the company is trying to send to you by this payment structure? What's the message? Fill up the back end, and here it is in specific terms. Here's the message. They are saying to you, we are willing to pay really big money, really big money for leaders of leaders. Not leaders of distributors. Not leaders of just a few executives, right? Leaders of leaders. You know, I've got racehorses in Kentucky. I like those thoroughbred ponies, okay? And the racehorses have a different level of success, too. The most successful sires in the thoroughbred industry are the sires of sires. You know what that means? That means that the horse went to the track and won, won good money on the track. And then he went out and he got sold to be a stud. And as a stud, he produced other runners, and that's good too. 
But the ultimate is for that stud to go out and produce other studs that produce runners and pass on that gene blueprint through his whole progeny. That's what you have to do here. You've got to pass that blueprint on through your whole progeny in this business. Okay, you've got to become a leader of leaders. It can't just be a leader of some executives. They've got to then replicate it again and create other leaders. Do you see that? That's the difference. That's what you've got to do. And so become an executive factory, folks. Be thinking all the time in your mind about how many LOIs do you have this month. You should know that number. You ought to call your account executive every month and say, what's my total number of LOIs in my pay line? Find out. Be tracking that. Not just front line, but I'm talking all the way down through your six generations. In times in my business when we've really grown and made huge impact, I think back to 1989 and 1990 when I started in the business, when we really got traction, it was two and three and four hundred LOIs a month. Am I right, Dave? Two or three or four hundred LOIs a month was happening, guys. When you have that many people that are inserting themselves and going for leadership, and about 50% of them complete the process, you're breaking 200, 150 executives a month? If those executives are doing 3,000 a month in volume, what have you added? Half a million in volume a month? Can you see that? It starts to get really significant. How can that happen? without duplication. How can that happen without a system? The answer is, it can't. The only way, I hope you're listening to me, the only way you can actually make that happen is you can have a simple duplicatable system and you've got to follow that system and you've got to teach that to your people. You've got to demand of them that they become leaders. You've got to give them assignments. You've got to say your goal is to, you, you and your four or five guys, you get five LOIs this month. Break it out. Parcel it out among your front line. Give them assignments every month. People need to be told exactly what to do. They've never done this before. They don't know what to do exactly. Go tell them. All right, when I started with Kenton, I said, Kenton, I want 15 people on the phone, and I want them on the phone in three hours. Okay? We didn't wait around. We started right now. Okay? We're not going to wait. All right, so... That is what you've got to do. Now, let's just go to this next slide right here. If your goal is to be successful, then what do you have to do? I mean, it's right on the screen here. You want to really make money in this company, guys? Okay, if you really want to make money, you've got to be a blue diamond. You've got to do that part. That's forty to 45000 a month. That's over half a million a year. You've got to be a blue diamond, and then naturally, most blue diamonds will progress to Team Elite. Why not? It's kind of like right there, and you might as well go get it. So that's what happens. Let me show you how this money works on the back end of this plan. On the front level, you are going to have 12 executives, aren't you? You have to, to be a blue diamond. You're going to have 12 executives. And let's put another 3,000 up there. We can see on the second column here. 3,000 in what? Group volume. Now, the average volume worldwide for executive groups in the whole world in this company is about $4,000 a month, about 4,000 points. Okay, so I am not at even the average. I am being a little more conservative here. So we're going to say they all do 3,000. They do the bare minimum they have to do to get 5% on their groups. Okay, so let's just go with the bare minimum. They have to do 3,000. 12 groups doing 3,000 is 36,000 in total volume on your first level of breakaway executives. And you're going to get 5%, right? Where did that 5% come from? Anybody know? Where did it come from? Right here. It's that top one right there. And I don't know if you can see that or not. That top one right there is where that 5% comes from. Okay? Those of you that are brand new, just hang in there. Okay? You're going to see how this works. So that's your first level. Now, here's what happens. On your second level, you're going to eventually end up with 24 executive groups on your second generation of leaders, of executives. How does that happen? Does it happen where somebody goes out there and they always get two people each and then the next get two? I can't stand these multi-level guys that go on their little presentations and stand up in front of the room and go, and two times two is four, is eight, is 16, is 32, is 64. It never works like that. Ever. Don't ever count on that. That is not how it happens. Let me tell you exactly how this happens. One, one of these 12 right here at the very top, one of those 12 on your front line 
will want to become a blue diamond themselves. That's what will happen. One out of the twelve will become a blue diamond themselves. They all by themselves will get half of those 24 people on the second level. They'll get half of them. They have to, to be a blue diamond, right? And some will get six, and some will get three, and some will get two, and some won't get any. They'll just kind of stay there as executives, and they'll stay there a long time. I've got a guy in Denver, Colorado, that I've never even met, who's an executive on my front line, and he buys $500 of Nutriol every month. For, you know, every month. He's got a little hair salon, $500 a month, and he does like $3,200, $3,800 a month, every month. He's done it for like 15 years. Okay? He was down line four or five levels, and he eventually just kind of rolled up, and that's what's that. That's there. Okay? Some people will just stay there. That's just the way it is. That's okay. That's volume. We'll take that every month, right? Half of those come from one good person on your front line. Okay, so the net result is you end up with 24 executives on your second level. 24 executives doing 3,000 each in volume is 72,000 in total group volume times 5%, which is that second 5% number we had just down below, is $3,600 in a month, right? You've got to stop and look at those two and say, you are kidding me. I become a blue diamond, I did all that work for 5400 bucks a month or whatever. No, you're still getting paid in the middle, you're still getting paid on the front. You're just now accumulating permanent income. The front is temporary, the middle is temporary, the back is permanent. You want permanent income? You've got to get to the back. You've got to fill up the back end of the compensation plan. All right? So that's the second level. And let's just kind of run this out so you can see how it works. On the third level, over time, you will have 48 groups, executives. 3,000 each is 144,000, 7,200 on that level. On the fourth level, you're going to have 96 groups. On the fifth level, you're going to have 192 groups. And on the sixth level alone, you're going to have 384 groups of executives. And you think to yourself, that's impossible. I don't even know 384 people, let alone executives, right? You don't have to know them. You don't know those people yet. They haven't come into your life yet. But they will. From the people you know, who know people who know people, you're going to create those groups of people. So on your sixth level, guys, look at the volume. And look at the commission. Commission is 57600 bucks on the sixth level alone. Notice that every succeeding level is worth as much money as all the previous levels combined. Did you notice that? The sixth level alone is worth more money than the previous five levels combined. That's why my sponsor, Craig Tillotson, says that a sixth level comp plan is like a license to print money. That's exactly true, right? You can literally print money with a sixth level compensation structure. Your total commission would be $113,400 a month. If you do this, that's what you get. Have people made more than that? Absolutely. I'm making more than that every month. Okay? Have people made less than that? Absolutely, right? We'll talk about that in just a second. Before that, I want to put a red line in here. Okay, what's that red line mean? This is to illustrate for everybody in this room the difference between a three-level pay plan and a sixth generation pay plan. There's a little company, not far from here, called Herbalife. And Herbalife has a three level breakaway compensation plan. Yes, they do have other bonuses, some infinity bonuses and things, to be fair to the uh, compensation comparison, but I want to show you the real difference here. You want to talk about not bonuses, but permanent income? You want to talk about that? Let's talk about the real stuff. Permanent income, okay? They pay 5%, three generations deep of executives. In that compensation plan, if you built the exact same downline structure I'm showing you right here, the exact same, you would make about $13,000 a month instead of $113,000 a month. Because somebody just stops you right there and says, sorry, that's all we pay. You can't reach any of that down there. Now, some people say, well, why couldn't we get paid seven levels or eight, you know? Well, the company's got to make a profit and stay in business, right? If people come to you and say, we pay to infinity, Go, no, you don't. Yes, we do. We pay to infinity. No, you don't. You can't pay to infinity. You will go bankrupt, right? If we paid 20 levels deep at 5%, how much is that? 100% of all the money that came in the company, how do they live? They can't. No one pays to infinity. You understand that? It's impossible. They'll be bankrupt. Okay, so now that we're straight on that, some companies like Amway, Amway pays three levels, but they pay 3%, 
2% on the second level and a half a percent on the third level. Is that a hose job or what? <laughs> if you are going to go through the trouble to put yourself into this very challenging environment called PharmaNex and network marketing, if you're going to go through the personal growth and stare it in the face, have the courage to say, I am going to change. Because that's what it's going to take for you to change to be successful in this opportunity. If you're going to go through that much effort and that much trouble, wouldn't you want to be in a place where you can really get paid? Sure you would. And this company pays it out, you guys. Now, some people say, well, you know, why can't we have that plan just a little bit different? Why can't we pay a little bit more in the middle? Or why can't we pay more to all those poor distributors on the front? There's not enough money to try to make all the distributors rich. And you know what? They don't deserve it yet. The fact is they've got to go through the growth and change. They've got to prove they can become a leader. And this plan has proven itself over time to be the most lucrative dynamic plan ever in the history of this industry. Period, you guys. You are in the perfect place to make this thing happen and make it happen for yourself. All right, now let's go ahead to the next slide. You might recognize some of these average incomes right here, right? You can see all the way down from gold to lapis to ruby, emerald, diamond, blue diamond, and team elite across the top. And you can see that if you're a blue diamond last year in the United States, actually 2004 numbers, you made $528,000, right? And how much is that? About $45,000 a month. Is that worth it? You think it's worth it to be a blue diamond? Okay. Yeah, it's worth it, believe me. And it can get a lot better than that. I got a question for you. $45,000 a month as a blue diamond is a far cry from $113,400 a month that I just showed you on the previous slide. So what gives? Was I lying then or am I lying now? Neither. I'm not lying at all. Okay? How come they're so different? This is an important question for everybody in this room. We published the numbers. Okay, somebody just said the back end is not full yet. That's true. How long does it take to fully mature a sixth generation breakaway compensation plan? Is it a lot of work to fully mature it? How long does it take for you to find all your 12? And then for them to dive in and find their 4, 5, 12, 6, 8, whatever it is, or none. Or have those third level people find their people, and the fourth find theirs, and the fifth find theirs, and the sixth find theirs. How long does it take to fully mature a sixth level compensation plan? I think it's about 10 years. I think it's about 10 years to fully mature it. That's just the average, guys. Some Blue Diamonds and Team Elites are making a lot more than that. There's a whole bunch of them making a lot less than that, right? That's just the average right there. You understand that? It's just time. It just takes some time for you to mature this. Now, we're going to teach you some principles in just a second here about driving these lines and how that will help you to, to solidify, to fill out these levels in a way that you probably would have never filled them out as quickly as this. So we're going to jump into that here in just a second so you can see. I want you to understand clearly what it takes to make $10,000 a month. Let's kind of back up. Now that I've given you this big global picture, let's come right down to your life, to your chair where you're sitting right now. Okay, you're brand new or you've been in the business a few months. You are hoping to make $10,000. Maybe that's your first waypoint. For some of you, it's probably five. Make 5,000, you're going to feel really good about yourself and go, okay, I'm survivable, and now I can keep moving on. I want to start at 10, okay? What does it take for you to make 10,000 per month in this company? And I'm not talking about all the extra stuff. I'm talking permanent income, 10,000 a month. How many people's lives would change if you knew you had 10,000 a month coming in your mailbox every month no matter what? How would that be? How would that change your life? Visualize that. Think about that. That's nice. That's very significant. It's not easy to do. How do you do it? You got to realize, guys, permanent residual income is a different animal than anybody else gets, even people with their own businesses, okay? They still got to show up. They've got to manage those employees, right? Because nobody cares about it like them. How do you create permanent residual income? It's a really rare, unique kind of income to get. So few people in this world ever get that kind of income. They don't even really know what it means. And they don't even believe it because they just can't imagine it, that it could actually just keep coming in. You know? That's what they don't get. This is way different than virtually what you can get any place. 
And it's really difficult to create it, but once you have it, it's really solid and it's really amazing. It's the best kind because it gives you your life. At the same time, you get the money. Most people don't get that. That's really hard to get. I'm going to give you worst case. I always deal in worst case. All right? This is the worst case right here. For you to make 10000 per month, you have to get 200000 in volume. Don't you? Worst case, you do. How are you going to create 200000 in volume in your group? A lot of you just did 10000 in volume last month. Or maybe 3000 You maybe can't even conceive of getting 200000 It is the system, guys. It's LOIs. It's constantly saying to your people, have you filed your LOI? Have you placed your LOI? Do you have your LOI done? How many LOIs do you have in your downline? How about your LOI? The LOI, the LOI. It's like a, like a broken record. It's about LOIs. Okay? Here's what it takes. 200000 at 5% is $10,000, right? How do you get that done? Here's one way to get it done. You could go out there and create 20 executives that do 10000 in group volume each, right? Wouldn't that be 200000 in volume? Okay, how likely is that, that you're going to find 20 executives that will end up averaging 10000 each? Not very likely, is it? I've already told you the average executive worldwide is about 4000 right? Okay, well, that was before the scanner, all right? Now we're getting scanners out there. So, or, you know, you can do this right here. How about creating 40 executives that do 5000 in volume each? Is that plausible? That's very plausible. That is doable right there, Okay. How do you create 40 executives? That sounds like an awful lot of work to do. Do you have to find all 40 yourself? Or are you going to duplicate a little bit? Yeah, you're going to duplicate. You're going to follow the system. Otherwise, it's probably impossible. But if you follow the system, it's totally plausible that it can happen. All right, so what does it take to succeed? Okay, let me show you these numbers that Scott gave us a while back, okay? What does it take to succeed? On average, a person who signs up today takes three years to land at Blue Diamond status. Okay, people say all the time, and I know they've said it to every leader in this room, what am I looking for? Who's my profile? You know, tell me what they all look like. Are they all 38-year-old females and they got a college degree and then they became Blue Diamonds? What is it? Okay, the answer is there is no profile. They come from every different walk of life. And so what you have to do is you have to go out there and just find motivated people, right? Do you understand the difference between trying to motivate people and finding motivated people? Those sound pretty close, but they're radically different. You are not here to motivate people. You're here to find those people that are already motivated, that have that fire burning so bad inside of them that they just gnaw, it's gnawing at them to be successful in life. That's who you're looking for. And all of a sudden you match them up with this vehicle, right? And they commit, and they make the changes, and they become blue diamonds. It takes three years on average for the average blue diamond. We can look in our computers, and we can see that from the day they signed up to the day they landed there, it took three years. How many people do they have to sponsor? This is pretty interesting, isn't it? Okay. On average, the average blue diamond sponsors 151 distributors personally on their front line. 151. That's incredible, isn't it? How many weeks are in a year? That's on the screen. How many? 52. How many weeks in three years? That's on the screen, okay? There's 156 weeks in three years. So on average, the average Blue Diamond sponsored about one person a week, every week, for approximately three years. Are you willing to do that? Do you know why people don't make Blue Diamond status? Because they won't do that. Is it worth it? to talk to enough people that you can sponsor a person a week and do that for the next three years? Is it worth it to do that for the next three years and then maybe five years, once you're there to solidify it and build it bigger, to average 45000 a month? What else are you going to do in the next five years that you could have 45000 a month of permanent residual income? Seriously. Tell me what it is, you guys. It's not real estate. Believe me, I did that one too. It doesn't work like that. You go close a deal, you're unemployed till the next closing. You try to close another one, you close it, and you get some money, and you're unemployed till the next one. Constant process of being unemployed till the next one. If you ever stop, it's over. Permanent residual income is really unique. Very difficult to find a vehicle that can even give that to you. And you're sitting in it. You're right here. I hope this is not lost on you. I hope you understand what it takes. So, you know, just to summarize on the slide, 
That's it. How do you do that? Eric said it this morning. Talk to three new people every day. Do the three-foot rule. Anybody who clips your fingertips, you're talking to them. All right? Walk and talk. Smile and dial. That's all you got to do, right? Just keep talking to people. Like Russ said, when the phone's off the hook, you're in business, right? I say if your mouth's closed, you're out of business. Your business is closed. Your mouth's open. It's going like this. Your business is open. We're paid to talk to people. We are paid to recruit. You should spend 90% of your time in the first several years recruiting. And don't worry about the ones who leave because you can't make it the right time for them. Most of the reasons people quit our company have nothing to do with our company. Did you hear me? Most of the reasons people drop out of our business have absolutely zero to do with our business. So don't take that personal. Don't worry about that. You're looking for motivated people. You're looking for people that it's the right time in their life. Something has changed in their life. And all of a sudden, they're ready. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's gnawing in their gut. They're looking. They're open. And they want it. And they're going to do it. All right. So what's a power line? Anybody know what a power line is? This is not one of those big lines on that tower suspended behind your house. Okay? There's a different kind of power line. What is a power line? Okay? A power line is this. Here's the definition right here. It's one leg of your business that runs to over 10 levels deep of executives, ultimately with blue diamond on top of blue diamond on top of blue diamond all the way down that line. That is a power line. If you can learn how to develop power lines, you can get really rich in this company. This is a technique, and it's a technique that dovetails, it kind of interacts with two really key parts of our compensation plan. And these key parts are ingenious. On the surface, most people look at it and say, that seems a little tough. These are the two key components that really move people, that really motivate them. And you need to understand them. And most of you have never understood this part. And you've got to listen close and you've got to write down these notes today as we go through this. Let me tell you what's happened to me with these power lines. Okay, what's a power line worth? One power line. I had a lot of people come to me last night and said, you know, what does it take to really be successful? How many people are you talking about? One. All you need is one really great person. That's all you need. You know, what if you would have sponsored Dan McCormick? Would you like to do that? What if you would have sponsored Lon Wardrop? What if you would have sponsored Peter and Carew Bannister? Okay? I mean, just for example's sake, there's a whole bunch in the room we could say that about, right? What, it's just, it just takes one really good person, you guys. You want to know the reality of it? Let me give you the, the straight facts here. The reality is most team elites and blue diamonds in this company have one power line. They've got one line that just took off and has made them their money, made them millions of dollars. That's the truth of it. If they have two power lines, they're really lucky. And you know why that is? Because most blue diamonds had no prior network marketing experience. They didn't know what to do, and they weren't that great at recruiting or presenting in the beginning. And what they did is they just slammed them against the wall. One a week. Wham! Will he stick? Boom! Went to the floor. Grab the next one. Wham! Will he stick? Boom! That guy went to the floor. Next one. Wham! Will he stick? Boom! He went. Oh. Next one. Wham! Oh, that guy stuck. What do you know? That guy's scrambling up the wall. He's fighting, you know? And so it's just sheer numbers, isn't it? Sure it is. It's will they stick or not. And so they just plow through the numbers. They're really good recruiters. And maybe that's the best thing we can say to everybody here is just look at the numbers. Maybe that's what it's going to take for you. Now, honestly, for me, I didn't really do it like that. I had been in two companies before this one. I was kind of really prepared. I kind of knew what I needed to do. I didn't have to go through that previous four years of learning curve that you have to go through if this is your first experience. I spent four years, two in one company and two in another, learning this business. Okay? That's why I could go so fast in this one, guys. You know how lucky you are that you found the one right off the bat? My first one went bankrupt. My second one went bankrupt. That's not very fun, right? No, that really stinks. You don't want to do that. It's like a meat grinder. Bring all your friends in. Hey, all you guys, is great. Come on in here. <laughs> they to grind them up. Oh, man, your leg came off. Your head's over there. That's too bad. And so you found the right one right off the bat. How lucky is that? You are unbelievably lucky. You really, truly are. You have to get it. 
So you get serious about it and make it happen. What I did when I started recruiting is, you guys have heard my story, I sponsored 33 people the first year. 33. That's a little less than one a week, isn't it? That's one about every week and a half. I didn't do them like that. I sponsored a bunch of them in the first three, four months. Okay? I wanted to see who would play the game. At the end of that first year, 20 of them had, in essence, quit. Oh, they weren't out of the company. They'd buy product and stuff. But they weren't going to be executives. I didn't spend any time with them. Do you have time to spend with people that aren't going to be executives? No. Time's your enemy, guys. Most of you start part-time. You have no time. You've got to be really jealous about your time. You can't let anybody waste it. All right? You've got to be very focused on who you're going to spend your time with. That's what I do today. I train myself in those days, and it's a habit that I've acquired and you need to acquire. I listen to everybody. When you call me, I listen to the tone of your voice. I look in your eyes. I'm watching you. I'm watching your actions. I'm seeing who's really serious. Because I've got to make judgments about who I'm going to spend my time with. I don't have time to spend with everybody in my downline. I've got to decide who I'm going to work with. Who's got the greatest potential for return. That's really the way it is. And so I'm making judgments all the time. I'm listening to you. I'm watching you. I'm looking at your actions. I'm listening to the tone of your voice. Don't call me with that nasal voice, okay? Nathan, it's really hard, you know. I don't know if I can do this or not. Okay? If you give me that nasal voice, I will give you dial tone pretty fast. Because I don't have time to waste with people that are going to be whiners and complainers like Harv talked about a minute ago. Because they've already got all kinds of stuff screwed up, okay? I just know that that's really a long shot. And so I'm going to work with people that are positive, that are calling me. You know, I'm not calling them every second, right? Do you have those people? You call them, come on, man, it's going to be really good. Man, you won't believe that conversation. That conversation is incredible. Too bad you went there. We're so sky high. Come on. <laughs> you pump them up. <laughs> Guys all pumped up. <laughs> hey, y'all. I got it. I got it. I'm going to do it. Call them the next day. <sighs> Guys, oh, I don't know, man. No, I just, uh, it's a bad night, you know. All of a sudden, come on. You can do it. <laughs> I got it! Next day, same thing. Deflated. Do you have time to do that? No, you don't. You do not have time. They will suck your energy out of your body. They will suck you dry. Do you get that? You've got to guard your attitude like a big dog. Attitude is everything, right? It really is. Don't you believe that? You create your own reality by what you perceive. Your perceptions of this company and what you can do is your reality. If you want to change your reality, you change your perception. Right? How do you change that? Go watch the goal setting video we did, okay? That's how you change your perception of reality. People say, well, you get them in the room and you just want them to drink your Kool-Aid. You bet, we want to drink all the Kool-Aid we can because it's not really good out there, you know? What's the options you have? You want to go drink their, you know, lemonade? No. You don't have anything out there. There is nothing to go back to. There's no job you're going to go get that's going to be like this. Why would you ever go back to prison when you're free? You don't want to do that, right? That's the point of it. So yes, your life is made up of you drinking the Kool-Aid, you guys. It's called positive thoughts, positive words, positive action doing something great for other people, helping them solve their problem, right? Isn't that it? It is it. That's what we do. And so don't let people belittle you by saying, oh, you're brainwashing that thing. Say, I'm really trying to get more brainwashed. I'm really trying to get into it, okay? That's what you have to do. Do you know what I did when I started? When I started, I had one of these stupid little flip charts, and right in the front it had one of those clear plastic covers. We had no brochures. I cut out these dumb little newspaper articles, and I had this picture of this lady with one side of her face good and the other bad, and you know, all this kind of stuff. And I basically put it in this flip chart, and that was my presentation, really. In the front, I put my goal sheet. I slid it right in the front of that clear plastic, so every time I pulled out my, my flip chart, I could see my goals. You know what my three goals were? I wrote three things on that paper. Number one, I wrote down, I will make $100,000 a month within one year in this company. That was my first goal. Wrote it right down right there. That was audacious. You know, that was insane. Like whoever, you know, could even think they could make that. I didn't care. Think big, guys, right? Wrote it down. Shoot for the stars. You might hit the moon, right? I wrote it down, 100000 What was the second goal? The second goal was avoid negative people. Okay, now if that's your spouse, that's a problem. I can't really help you much on that one. <laughs> 
Avoid negative people. Avoid them like the plague. That's really, really critical. And number three, you know what it was? Never quit. Never quit. Those are my three goals. That was it. Very simple. And I would see him every day, many times. Do you think that programmed my mind? What was my 12th month check? $99,641.38. Okay? Oh no. I was mad. I was upset. I missed it by 358 bucks and change. I was ticked. Okay? But it was still pretty good. And so, what are you going to do? Write it down. Read it every day, right? Scott Schwartz has given us a little uh, statistic. They ran a, a report. They said, of all the people who've been executives or higher for 10 years or longer in this company, what percentage of those are blue diamonds? I'll say it again. What percentage of people who've been at least executives or higher in the comp plan for the last 10 years have been at least executive or higher? What percentage are blue diamonds? 95%. What does that say to you? Don't quit. You just keep plotting. If it takes you 10 years, like it took Brent Bryson that you heard this morning. It took him 10 years. It's because that subway thing screwed up his mind for 10 years, right? You know, he got thinking different or something. We had to teach him. And all of a sudden, 10 years, he finally got it. Boom, his group just explodes. Okay? It's worth it. If it takes that long, it's worth it. What are you going to go back to? The ball and chain? What are you going to go back to? Nothing. More of the same. No hope, no future. Just rent your life to somebody. There isn't any alternative. Okay? So you suck it up and you get the job done. No excuses, right? You can make excuses or you can make money, but you can't make both. Can you? No, you can't. So no excuses except responsibility for yourself. What's a power line worth? Twenty to forty thousand per month. A really good one's worth forty thousand. You know, kind of an average one's worth twenty thousand or so. How many power lines would you want? A whole bunch? Yeah. If you get one, it'll be really great really, really great. But if you can manufacture power lines, not just executives, would that be even better? Yeah, that'd be really good, wouldn't it? All right, let's talk a little bit about a story here. There's a couple of people in this room that are part of this story, so they'll hear their names in a moment. They'll listen up here. I want to tell you how I started, because inside of this story, it's instructive. It, it covers everything from start up to the end and what you've got to do. And I want you to listen. I want you to take notes. Are you guys awake? Yeah. Are you guys with me? Okay. Okay, good. All right, let's start off and talk about how we did this. Right as I was sponsored, literally within a couple of days, and in fact, even the same day, I said, okay, I'm in, let's go. My sponsor said, all right, let's start calling people. And we started calling people. My friends, people I knew, some people we knew in common, because we're kind of family members and so forth, we just started recruiting instantly. There was no 48-hour training. You know what it was? On-the-job training. It was me watching him give the pitch, and I'm listening, I'm watching, I'm learning. And I'm hearing how he answers the objections, right? You've got to do that, you guys. It won't be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. But you've got to be in the trenches with your people. If you're not in the trenches, you're not making it happen. We went and tried to recruit a guy named Mark Haroldson that had a big old real estate program, sold books, did big seminars like Harvard and that kind of stuff. We went to talk to this guy and we said, hey, you know what? We've got a great thing. This company's going to go from small to big and you need to be part of this. And he said, you know what, I've got a great business, I'm really too busy for it, so I'm not going to do your business, and thank you for coming. And on the way out, I said to him, you know, you've got to know somebody who is, you know, tired of what they're doing, does not like what they're about, and they just are looking for a change. And he said, you know, he thought, and he said, you know, he goes, I will give you one name. He said, there's a guy that came to one of our seminars, and he said he lives down in Florida, and his name is Richmond Flowers. I had never heard of this name in my life, Okay. Well, apparently he ended up being kind of a famous guy. I didn't know any of this. I called him on my cell phone out of that meeting. I got him on the phone. He was in the futures business down in Florida, and he was selling futures contracts, and he was always like just high stress, like major high stress. He always had to be right by the phone watching his positions and seeing if he's long or short and getting out of those positions or putting on new ones, right? And that's what he was doing. It was major stress. He hated it. He absolutely hated it. He was totally married to the market. He could never even really go on vacation, okay? It's a terrible thing, and he wanted out. And he wanted out bad. I get this guy on the phone. I said, Richmond, he said, you don't know me. My name's Nathan Ricks. They said, I just met with this person in Salt Lake City who gave me your name. And he said, you're a successful guy. And he said that you might be looking for an opportunity. And he goes, yeah, okay, so nice to meet you. What do you got? And I said, the name of the company is Nuscan. 
They said, we have this great opportunity. It's going to be massive. The company is only five years old. It's going to go from small to big. You need to hear about it. He says, I have heard about it. He said, funny you would call. I went to a new skin presentation seven days ago, and they just had never called me back. True story. And I said, we can take care of that right now. I put him on the phone with the company and signed him up on that phone call. And that day it was a $250 little skincare package in a blue bag, all shrink wrapped together. And I got that thing out in the mail to him. And before we hung up, I said, Richmond, do you really want out? I said, listen, I just started this thing, but I am dead serious. I am going to kill this thing. I said, I'm looking for my leaders. I said, are you serious? I got to know. Because I'm not going to waste my time with you if you're not serious. I said, if you're really serious, can you, can you guys hear my posture? I'm not going, oh, will you do it? I mean, would you, would, would you consider working with me? I don't talk like that to people. I say, I'm picking my team. You know? Do you want to be? Listen to those words. Write them down, you guys. I'm selecting my generals. Okay? And I said, how serious are you? Because if you are, I expect you to call me every day. I want to do two or three three-way calls every day, and we are going to build your team. And he said, I'll do it. And he did it. And he called me two, three, four times a day. He really wanted this. He saw it. He was serious about it, okay? One of the people we talked to one day was sitting right there. Is sitting right there. Paula Cook, okay? And so I'm just going to, like, hit my clicker here so you can see how we're doing this, right? Okay, so we got Richmond. There he is, right there. And we start calling his people. We called people all over Tennessee and all over Alabama where he grew up, Dolphin, Alabama, and people he knew in the futures business all over the place. And Paula was an interesting person that Richmond actually knew, okay? And Paula was working for this really great airline called Eastern Airlines, okay? And I'm not sure how the whole story went. My memory's a little vague, but the reality is, the long and short of it was that Paula wasn't so intrigued in the beginning. You know, I've got this great company. They'll never go out of business. They're just awesome, you know? Well, it didn't take very long, and they were out of business, okay? And Paula became interested in our company. And so Paula got sponsored, okay? And Richmond had Paula right here, and we started working down line. And so all of a sudden, this has been about two months, and Richmond says to me, let's go to Dallas, Texas. He said, I used to play for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, wow, really? You're pretty famous then, huh? And so he says, I know quite a few people there. Why don't we go over there, and we'll start to work on some people that I know in Dallas. And so we both agreed, and this was August now, and I signed up on June 15th of 89. This is August, early August. I've been in the business, you know, six weeks or something like that. Richmond is already ripping along in this thing and becoming an executive. And so we decided we're going to fly there. How, how many of you have talked to somebody on the phone for six weeks or maybe a long period of time, you worked with them on the phone all the time, and you form a mental image of what you envision they look like? You've never seen them, but based on their voice, you have this image in your head, right? I, I envision this big football player guy, you know, football, Dallas Cowboys and all that. So we decided we'll meet at DFW Airport this one day. We both fly in. He comes in from Miami. I come in from Salt Lake City. We've talked to this guy who said, okay, I'll set up a meeting and so forth, and we'll get going, and I'll just put his name on the screen. His name is Bob Creech, okay? So there's Bob Creech, and Bob was in the oil futures trading business down there. And so we went down to do a meeting for Bob, and Bob's got it all set up. We fly in there kind of about afternoon, 1, 2 o'clock, we drive down and we finally meet each other at the, uh, at the terminal. And he got there before me, so he's waiting for me. And I come off the jetway and I'm kind of looking around and he goes, are you Nathan Ricks? I said, are you Richmond Flowers? <laughs> this little skinny guy, you know? And he says, yeah, I am. And I said, okay, we are who we are. Let's go do the meeting. So we took off. We jumped in the car. It was kind of weird. So we jumped in the car and we go down and we have a little meeting at Creech's office and he's got a couple guys there. And, He's winding down the day trading, and we decide to go to dinner, and then we're going to go to this meeting at this Hampton Inn off the LBJ Freeway. And he's got this little teeny room rented, about 40 people in the room, and, and it's all set up for that. And I've never really done, like, a large meeting out of town. You know, I've done a few in town and a few at the offices we have there and so forth, but I've never really done this on the road. I have no slides. I have nothing. I've got this little flip chart. That's what I've got. And so we basically get these guys in the room. It's about 7 o'clock, and they're all kind of showing up. And I'm thinking, all right, pretty good-looking crowd. So Creech stands up and says, hey, we got Richmond Flowers here. You know, he should play for the Cowboys. And some of the people knew his name. And, yeah, and so he's a big stud. So he walks up there, and, you know, he gets in front of the room, and he starts telling them about the Cowboys, and they're all kind of doing this male bonding thing. You know, okay, that was good. And then he says, now we're going to tell you about the great business. And I got Nathan Ricks right here. Nathan, take it away. And so I'm thinking, oh, okay. 
So I jump up and I go, man, I'm really excited to be here. We're going to tell you about the hottest thing you've probably ever seen in your life. And I pull out my flip chart and I, I'm literally walking around the room like this. I'm showing people. I see that. See this, you know? Look how cool this is. And look at this lady's face and all this stuff, you know? And then here's the compensation plan. And it was about 30 minutes and it was getting pretty old. I was terrible. I was terrible. It stunk. And these guys are looking around like, when is this going to be over? They're looking at their watches like, well, <clears throat> Richmond is back there talking to a couple of guys. And all of a sudden, he figures out what's going on. Why are these guys looking at their watches so much? Besides, it's a terrible presentation. But and he figures out, because they invited him to go, that Creech didn't invite far enough in front of the meeting. And so kind of the last minute, he remembered we were coming. And so he told all these guys he'd buy them drinks after the meeting if they all just showed up. So they were really there to get drunk, not really to listen to us. Richmond can be a little hot-headed, okay? He explodes. I mean, he is really furious. He basically drags Creech and throws him through the galleyway doors like these that go into the back kitchen here. And he's got him pinned against the wall back there. And I think he's going to hit him. I'm not quite sure what he's going to do to this guy. And he is hot. He goes, you, you have me fly all the way over from Miami. You have Nathan fly down from Utah and you just tell these guys to show up so you can get him drunk. I mean, he was literally, I thought, going to pop the guy. And Creech is basically freaked out and he's saying, okay, listen, Listen, I can fix all this. It's okay. It's okay, Richmond. <laughs> he says, I know Danny White. I know Danny White from the Dallas Cowboys, and we can get a meeting with him tomorrow. Richmond's a cowboy. He kind of likes, huh. okay, all right, and he kind of lets him go. I'm thinking, oh, good, altercation over. This is good. And he says, okay, but you better set it up. Creech goes, I will. I'll set it up. Don't worry. So meeting's over. We go back to the room, we're talking, we actually recruited a guy in the elevator on the way up who became an executive, okay? <laughs> Three-foot rule, man. They clip our hands, we're talking to anybody. And so we, we have this conversation that night, we go to bed. Sure enough, about, oh, about 8.30 or so, my phone rings. Richmond goes, okay, we got it, it's all set up. Peach will be here in a half hour, be ready to go. We're going to go see Danny White. I'm like, I've seen him on TV, you know? This guy's all pro, this is a big deal. I'm really pumped. I played a little football in my day, so I'm really excited about this. I can't quite believe it's happening. And so we get in the car and we drive about an hour. He lives in, his office is in McKinney, Texas, about an hour outside of Dallas, right? So we're driving way up there. We get to his office, it's 10 o'clock meeting, and we walk in and, you know, there's like trophies everywhere. There's Dallas Cowboys stuff everywhere. I am like really juiced. I'm thinking, this is great. They finally let us in his office. The whole wall is a mural of him, you know, throwing the ball. I mean, it's like huge. More trophies, everything. And he goes, how you doing? I'm Danny White, you know? And I'm just like, I'm starstruck. I can't even believe it. And he and Richmond kind of do the cowboy thing, and they're kind of like, yeah, I played here. Ah, I did that. Ah. They're doing that Mel Bondi thing, you know? I'm just kind of sitting back there like this, watching this. Oh, man, this is really cool. And so finally they sit us down around this table, and there's four places right there. Creech, Richmond, myself, and Danny White from the Dallas Cowboys. And Richmond finally says, you know, We've got this incredible, incredible thing. Nathan, take it away. Like that. And I go, okay. I grab my flip chart, you know. I pull the thing out. I don't know what to do, right? And I go, this is so good, Danny. I'm going to really appreciate your time. Believe me, you are going to love this, okay? And I start going through it, you know, and I finally get to the product, and I go, we actually have some, you know, and I reach down on my briefcase and I pull out a jar of new skin product and I slap that jar on the table. Literally, his eyes went just like this. Like that. He says, is this new skin? Is this new skin? Is that what this is all about? And I'm very enthusiastic. I said, yeah, it is. He goes, I don't believe this. He said, I've been using this product for two years. <laughs> kind of like you don't want anybody to know, you know? I've been using this for two years. This neighbor lady down the street sells it to my wife. I've been taking it, putting it on, you know? I can't believe it. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. No way. You know, that's incredible luck, right? And I said, well, he goes, I never knew there was a business with this. And I said, yeah. There is, you know? He goes, well, yeah, I, I probably would be interested. I said, we can take care of that right now. <laughs> we signed him up right there in the room, okay? 
I was so excited. I was like, I like walk out of his office, I feel like I'm walking three feet off the ground. I don't even need an airplane to go home. I'm just like, I can't even believe it. I said, you know, I called my wife as soon as we got in the rental car. We're driving back to the airport. I said, honey, you won't believe it. You won't believe it. She goes, what? Calm down. What? I said, we just signed up Danny White. Who's that? You know? <laughs> honey, he's the all-pro quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. I said, we're going to own Texas. This will be incredible. <laughs> right before we left, I said, now, Danny, listen. Here's what we got to do. I'm going to call you tomorrow. All you got to do is put like two people a day on the phone with me. I'm going to call you and you just put them on the phone and you just listen and I'll talk to them. Just like we did with you. We're going to sign them up. He goes, okay, I can do that. He's got a game coming up Sunday, you know. And I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. And he is agreeable. He's kind of like, all right, I'll try to do this. I called him the next day. Sure enough, I got right through. He puts me on to this guy named Buck somebody. I forget his last name now. And we talked to this guy. He's an insurance agent. And he goes, I'm in, Danny, if you're doing it. I'm in. Then he goes, you got to be part of my new team in you. You know, new team. Ha ha. Right? <laughs> he goes, all right, good. And so we did it. Sign him up. The next day comes. I call this, call Danny. Can't get through. Next day, can't get through. Next day, Saturday. Next day, again, Monday, can't get through. Tuesday, I finally get him on the phone. I said, Danny. I said, man, it's been like almost a week, you know? I said, I got to talk to you every day. We got to be talking to your people now. This thing's happening, man. You can own Texas. Let's go. And he says, well, you know, I had a game and everything, you know. I'm a little bit busy, you know. And I can kind of sense that he's just put off a little bit because I'm being a little aggressive. And I finally said, you know what? I said, let me do this. Let me come down a week from Thursday. I'll come down there. You just get like 10 or 15 people in your office. Instead of me bugging you every day, we'll just do it like that. I'll come down periodically. We'll just get you started. We'll get some people going, right? And he goes, okay, we'll do that. So a few days goes by, I call him, you know, and I called him back on the Tuesday before. And I said, I'm, I'm coming down, right? You got your people? He goes, yeah, yeah, talk to a few people, don't worry. I'll have people here, and, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing you again. And, you know, all right, great, we'll see you then. You know, he's been a little hard to get a hold of. He's a little flaky, right? So I'm hedging my bets. I can't afford any of this stuff. You know, I'm just barely started, but, you know, he's the Dallas Cowboy quarterback, right? So I think I better go. So I set up a meeting in Fort Worth, a luncheon, before his 5 o'clock evening meeting at his office. I fly in on Thursday, I get the rental car, I go to the luncheon, it's awesome. We have like 30 people there. We sign up virtually every guest, almost every one of them. We're back there signing people up, it takes till about 3 o'clock before we're all done. I say goodbye, I jump in my car, down the LBJ, up the McKinney. I'm on the way, I'm on the LBJ, I call him on my phone, I said, Danny, I said, I just left the luncheon, man, it went great, incredible, I'm going to be there in about an hour. And he goes, Nathan, he goes, shoot, is it Thursday? I said, yeah, it's Thursday, Danny, remember? We talked like two days ago, right? He goes, Nate, he goes, really? He goes, I don't have anybody coming. He goes, you know, he goes, I've blown it, man. He goes, I'm sorry, but you don't even need to drive up here because nobody's going to be here, you know? I mean, I am, I'm really ticked, you know? I'm thinking, what, you know, what do you mean you forgot? How could you, how could you forget about this? You know, I just talked to you two days ago. He goes, I know, but you know, he goes, I am kind of busy too, you know? I said, Danny, this is really bad. I said, I just started in this deal, man. I don't got this kind of time to waste this kind of money. I can't even afford these plane tickets. I'm doing this for you. We can get this thing going for you, you know? So when you're done playing football, you'll have something, man. I'm talking to him like this because I get it. I believe it, right? And he finally says, you know, this isn't right. You're right. This is, a, this is an injustice. And he said, let me make this right. He said, why don't you fly to Phoenix on Saturday? He goes, I'll introduce you to my whole family. I came from Phoenix, that's where I grew up, in Mesa. I'll put my whole family in front of me. I'm going to be over there on Saturday. What would you do? I'm sitting there thinking, right, yeah, it's Thursday. Let me just get back on that plane. You know, I'll go home, buy a short-term ticket for full price, which I can't even afford, and I'll just fly right back down to Phoenix so you can do this again, right? Then I thought, no, he is the all-poor quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> I took a really deep breath. Oh, okay, okay, Danny. I'll do that. I will be there, but don't forget. Said I won't. Said goodbye. On the way to the airport, call my wife. Say, honey, you need to come pick me up a couple hours earlier than we thought. You know, she goes, well, how did it go? I said, well, man, the luncheon was incredible. We signed up everybody. It was awesome. She goes, no, 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 no. That football guy. That football guy. How did it go with that football guy? I said, oh, oh he forgot. 
She says, you are kidding. He forgot? No way. I said, but it's okay, honey, because I'm going to fly to Phoenix on Saturday. He's going to put me in front of his whole family. We're going to get them all. My wife says, are you crazy? You know, forget this guy. We don't have that kind of money to be messing around. Don't you get it? He's not going to do it. I said, honey, it's hard enough, please. Just a little moral support, okay? Just a little bit. <laughs> Friday, Friday, and Scott Schwert will remember this. Friday, I drive down to Provo from Salt Lake, and I go to the old warehouse that's in the cow pasture next to the railroad tracks by the freeway. Remember that one? Had the garage door that went up, okay? And I load up. I'm loaded for bear. I say to myself, I am going to make this trip pay for itself. I buy three skincare kits and one hair fitness kit, and I got my blue bags with the product stuff in them, and I am loaded for bear. I'm going to get this thing, right? I buy this really expensive ticket, and I get on the airplane. I fly to Arizona. I've never been there in my life. I fly to Phoenix, get a rental car. I get the map. I find out where Mesa is. I drive out to Mesa. I'm supposed to be there at noon. All the family's going to be there at noon, right? I get out there, and I drive down this street in front of the house where I'm supposed to be, I think. It's about quarter to, and there's not one car on the street. Nothing. I think, oh, this can't be right, you know, so I go around the block, drive around again, come back, you know, it's about 5 2 now, and I'm looking, I'm thinking, well, no cars, but this surely has to be the house. I decide to gather up my briefcase, I got my four blue bags, I got all this stuff, I haul this stuff up, and I set it down, ring the doorbell, ding dong, and it took about, you know, half a second, half a minute, and this lady, this older lady, opens the door, got an apron on and everything, and, and I said, hello, I said, uh, is Danny White here? She said, no, he's not here. Said, he's not here? She goes, no, no, he's coming. She said, now, he said somebody would be showing up here today that I should expect. She said, let me see. You must be the new skin man. <laughs> what did I expect? I've got all these bags around me and stuff. I said, no, I'm the Avon lady. Can I come in, please? <laughs> she invites me in. I've got all this just stuff, you know, and I walk over into the parlor. It's kind of an older house. And I'm sitting in the parlor, and back behind the wall, there's the kitchen. Back in here, and I can see the kitchen table here from the parlor, you know. And I'm sitting on the couch, and she's kind of cooking up this storm. This huge meal is going on in here. I find out that everybody's coming for lunch. They have really no idea there's a meeting. This is taking on shades of an Amway presentation already, right? <laughs> and so all of a sudden, I'm just sitting there. And I'm waiting, and I'm thinking, you know, a couple minutes goes by, she's making small talk, trying to make me comfortable, and I'm talking to her and so forth. And all of a sudden, the back door over here, they've got this carport that's been converted to a family room. The back door of that carport goes wham, and I can hear it hit the wall. And all these little kids come running, streaming, and I see them pass right in front of me. Grandma! They're climbing on Grandma, you know, they're really happy to see her. Here come the beat-down parents walking behind, their hands dragging on the floor, like this. As soon as the parents come through where they can see me, they kind of see me out of the corner of their eye, and they, they look over, and they say to her, Who's that? And she goes, Oh, that's the new skin man. Don't worry about him. He's just sitting over there. How you doing? New skin man. Good to see you. I mean, just insult to injury. Happened like three times. I mean, everybody's showing up now, you know? About five, ten minutes late and everything. And I'm thinking, Where is he? I'm ready to kill this guy. Finally, he shows up, and they're like, Oh, Danny, oh, the big stud's here, and he's, hey, how y'all doing, you know, shaking hands and everything. Oh, it was a great pass last week. Yeah, I know, it was good, yeah. You know, so he's doing this whole thing, and finally he sees me over there, oh, Nathan, oh, good, man. Glad you made it, almost like he forgot I was coming again, you know, good, yeah. And he says, hey, y'all, he says, uh, this over here is Nathan Rex, he's with this new skin company, and we're going to eat real quick, and then he's going to kind of tell us about it. He said, I'm not really involved in it, I'm just kind of looking at it. I was like, you wimp, what are you talking about? You signed up. I didn't say that, but I was thinking that. <laughs> they eat pretty quick, you know, kind of get the thing done. And then, all of a sudden, it's kind of time, and I'm pretty nervous, you know. I mean, this is it. It's going to do or die right now. And they've got this, you know, homemade family room over here. And Danny starts grabbing his dad, and he grabs his sister and his little brother and everything. And I notice there's this guy the whole time who's been sitting off in the corner over here. It's like he's antisocial. Everybody else is there doing their thing, and he's just kind of sitting over there by himself, eating, and not even really interacting with anybody. He's got a whole bunch of kids in there, and his wife's in there, but he's just a loner. And I look over there, and I'm thinking, man, what is wrong with that guy? You know, I'm kind of watching him a few minutes. 
And finally, Danny goes over and grabs him. You know, I found out later this guy was a contractor out there in the Arizona sun for 20 years. I mean, you know, his face is just beat to death. I mean, talk about hammered skin and everything, you know. And he's sitting over there angry, you know. And so Danny just kind of grabs him. He's got this great big huge arm. He goes, come here, Scott, just come in here. And he just grabs him, just kind of sweeps him into the room with his big old arm. And he goes, what do I want to go in there for? You know, I felt like saying, because you look like a lizard, buddy. You need this stuff real bad. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. They sweep him into the room. He comes over there, and they've got this sectional couch, all right? So just picture this. Here's a sectional couch like this, and there's a single chair over here. Guess who sat in that? The angry guy, right? So I've got Danny's father, Wilfred, right here. I've got Danny's brother right here. I've got Danny and Danny's sister and the angry guy, okay? I'm over here next to the TV, and I'm in a chair, and I pull out my flip chart, and I say, you know what? You guys are going to love this. This is the hottest thing you've ever seen. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going through my things, you know. It's like 15 minutes. It is hotter than stink in this room. This is like this little carport where they closed in the old garage doors. It's kind of a homemade family room, and it's got homemade air conditioning. And it's the last week of August of 1989. It's Phoenix, Arizona. It is hot. I'm sweating, okay? You know, I look up, I kind of come up for air to survey my crowd and see how I'm doing. You know, see how excited they are, right? And I look over at Danny's father. He's sitting on the couch just like this. <sighs> he is out cold. He is totally gone. I probably looked up because he was snoring, making these sounds. <sighs> like that. I'm going around, I look at Danny's sister, and I come over to Danny. Danny's over there going... He's bobbing for apples, you know, <laughs> doing that. It's so painful. I just want to have him lay down. I'm like, here, just lay down. I know. You can just go to sleep right here. <laughs> and then I look over at the angry guy. Literally shocked me. I look over. As soon as my eyes made eye contact, it was like, <laughs> like that. This guy has laser eyes. I mean, who knows what was said? Who knows what happened? But I looked at him and he had these laser beams just burning holes in me. He's like, like this. Looking at you, you know? Just, just. I'm out of service. I looked up and I was like, like that. I thought, oh no. Not only is he angry, he's a psycho. The guy's a psycho. I think this isn't going so good, you know? I probably ought to wrap this up right now. I've got these four blue bags right there. So I put the flip chart together. I put it down. I said, well, I said, this is the greatest thing, isn't it? I said, I know you all are going to want to be in. I've only got four kits. Who's first? <laughs> Dead serious. As soon as I said that, the psycho jumps up. I'm thinking of all the bad luck. You know, how could this happen? He jumps up, he marches straight over to me. He's got his hand pulling his wallet out on the way. He pulls out $250 cash, and he puts it in my hand. He goes, I'm in, just like that. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Okay, this is looking a little better, even if he is a psycho, this is okay, right? As soon, literally within seconds of that cash landing on my hand, the father-in-law comes out of a deep sleep. He goes, you what? And he literally stands up, his arm goes, wham, and it grabs the money. True story. Here's my hand, there's the cash, here's the psycho's hand, and now there's this great big fat paw sitting on top. And the fat paw is literally shaking. It's going like this. And I'm like, wow. You know, I've heard about domestic violence, but I've never seen it before. And it's just going like this, you know? I mean, he is all steamed up. And he says to this guy, he goes, what do you mean you're in? Says, you marry my daughter. You get her pregnant five times. You've been unemployed for nine months. 
and you're going to give the, your last $250 to this guy for some skincare deal over my dead body. Like that. Whoa. This was very intense. No one in the room is sleeping. Everybody's on the edge of the couch. This must happen a lot in this family or something, you know? It's kind of like the game's on. Let's see who's going to win. And all of a sudden, the psycho takes his eyes, those laser eyes, and he turns them on the father-in-law. He just goes, just drills him. And he goes, hey, I don't know about you, but I'm in. Oh, everybody's watching. The father-in-law is sitting there going, wow, that was a good comeback from the son-in-law. What am I going to say? They're all looking at me. And he's looking around. And you can see, he wants to say something. You can see his eyes are kind of going, his mind's moving, his mind's going around. His eyes are going like this. And his mouth's kind of trying to mouth like... Like that. Everybody in the room's like, spit it out. Come on, spit it out. Finally, he says, okay. Okay, if you're in, then you're in underneath me. And so it ended up just like this. And I later found out that that person really wasn't a psycho after all. It was one of the greatest guys who's now retired, and you probably have never heard his name, but it's Scott Malone, okay? This guy called me every day. Now, normally, I'm making judgments about who I work with, right? I've got to decide who I'm going to spend my time with because my time's limited. I looked for contacts, resources, and credibility with those contacts. If they've got those three things and they get it, I'm game. I'm going to work with them. This guy had all of them except for the middle one. He didn't have any resources, but he was willing to do whatever it took. He called me every day. I remember one Saturday, we did three-way calls all day, like 14 hours. The next day, I put the phone to my ear. It was like, ouch, my ear was so sore. We only took breaks to go to the bathroom. That was it, 14 hours. He was willing to do whatever. He had nothing. He was living in a rented home. He ended up, the first month, we got his letter of intent in. He did his volume, pretty good volume too, like almost 10,000 within a few days. He, he really went after it. He was awesome, okay? And so his check shows up, and it's about 365 bucks. And his wife literally cried. And she said, Scott, don't do this to our family. Please get a job. Okay? He wouldn't hear of it. I don't know what happened. It's like the guy had a spiritual experience. He just knew this was his deal. He had to do it. He sells his family piano the next week. Couldn't even pay his phone bills. Okay? And so he keeps going. He's got two cars. He sells one of them. They're just junk tra trap cars, you know? He'd park the car three blocks away from his appointment so he'd, nobody would see his car and he'd walk to the appointment. Okay? Second month. Check comes along in the second month. His check is for about $800. Okay? His wife cries. She says, Scott, don't do this to our family get a job, please. How long can we go like this? Okay? He sells his children's beds. They're sleeping on the floor. He sells virtually everything he owns in this world to make it, to get there, okay? He broke as an executive in two months. We had good stuff going, really good stuff going. In the third month, his check came to his house for $6,600. His wife says, man, I love this business. <laughs> and then it went to 8, and then 11, and then 13, and then 17, and then 21, and just kept going, you know. Great story. Ended up buying his home that he lost to the bank back from the bank for less than the bank took it back for. <laughs> and so let me teach you a principle now, okay? We went on to sponsor other people here, but Scott Malone was the locker, you guys. Let's just bring that up there so you can see that, okay? What's a locker? What is a locker? A locker is the person who gets it no matter what. They're going to do it. They're the one who says to you, thank you for introducing me to this. Get out of my way. They totally get it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, listen close. You will find your locker three, four, five, six generations deep. Very rarely will you find your locker on the first or second level. Listen to this again. Write this one down. What you have to do is you want to spend all your time working on levels four, five, and six. Did you hear me? You don't spend very much time working on level one or even level two. You spend all your time down on three, four, five, six. You spend it in your downline. Because the level you spend your time on will multiply your results of the volume in your downline. In fact, for example, if I spend my time on my fifth or sixth level down here with Scott Malone, I'm going to multiply my volume by the number of the level I find my locker on. Watch, I'll show you exactly what I mean right here. Okay, so we get an LOI out of Scott Malone. I just want you to think about this, okay? First month, the second month. In those days, you had to do 500 personal volume. 2,000 to get your LOI in and 500 personal volume. Okay, so Scott Malone had way more than 2,000. He had almost 10,000 his first month. So I called up Wilford White. And I said, Wilford, this is Nathan. I said, Scott, your son-in-law is kicking butt. You've got a huge thing started underneath you. Wilford, you need to place your LOI. Wilford said, what's an LOI? I said, well, Wilford, it's a little letter that notices the company. You're going to be a leader, and you've got to do 500 in volume right now. You need to do that and sponsor another two people. He goes, okay, I'll do it. So he put his LOI in, placed his order, sponsored a person or two, got his LOI in. Okay, So that happened. Then the next thing that happened is he called up his son. He said, Danny, this is your father calling. Son, you need to place your LOI. <laughs> Danny says, what's an LOI? <laughs> Wilford said, well, I've already got mine done. <laughs> you need to do yours. 500 volume, get a few guys, you'll have your LOI done. Okay, I'll do it. He does it. Okay, so Danny puts in his LOI. We call up Bob Creech. We say, Bob, that little thing with Danny White, that's going crazy. You've got to get your LOI in right now. So he does it. Paula, same thing. Richmond was already an executive. Watch what happens here, you guys. Can you see the difference here? Today, in today's terms, let's put it today. Say it's 1,000 to place your LOI, right? The first month, everybody in that whole line can run off that $1,000. This is the first key pressure point in the compensation plan. Are you with me? Are you guys tired now? You gotta suck it up right now. You gotta get this point, okay? If you get a thousand dollars down line, someplace down there in the first month, everybody upline can count that volume for their own LOI. Did you know that? The first month only, right? The second month they can't do it. It's encumbered volume then. The first month it is not encumbered. Listen close. The level you can find the locker and get the LOI will multiply your volume the second month. What happens the second month there? The second month, they have to do 1,500, right? So in this case, we'll just go through kind of like the first month. They all count that same 1,000. So I don't really have 5,000 here because they just have to count the guy below. They all ride on one great guy. But the company, in their wisdom, will not let that happen the second month. The second month, they've got to stand on their own two feet. They can't ride on one great person underneath them because they're going to break away eventually and they don't want that guy to fail. So tough love dictates that they go ahead and have somebody else. If the second month, those people all do 1,500 each, my numbers are wrong there, it would be 7,500 in volume, wouldn't it? Versus just 1,000 if I work deep instead of wide. You understand what I'm saying here? If I work down, if I drive that line down and work deep, I can get five times more volume than I can by just sponsoring another person on my front line. I can go wide all day long. I can go sponsor another front line, front line, front line, get an LOI, get an LOI, get an LOI. That's just one guy, just one level. If I drive at five levels and get an LOI, the second month I get six times, seven times the volume of just doing a front line guy. You guys see groups out there that have 20, 30, 40,000 in GV and you wonder how they do it? That's how they do it. And most of them doing it without knowing that it happened. They don't even know that they did that. But that mechanism in the plan kicked in for them and made it happen, like Byron up there in Blair in Canada. That very thing happened to them in last November, and they did huge group volumes, okay? This is how you make it happen. This is how you manufacture this, you guys. You have to understand this. This is really important, right? So then what happens is the next month right here, okay? The next month, we sponsored Rick Palmer. Palmers are here today. Are you? Where are you? Right there, okay, okay who sponsored Mark Mabry, and I remember the day we went to Mark Mabry's Prudential Real Estate Office, 
And Danny came with us. He was in town. And the Palmers were there. And Scott was there. We went over to Mark Mabry's office. And we said, Mark, you need to do this. Mark's family had the Prudential franchise for Phoenix. And Mark got the vision and said, okay, I'm going to do it. Mabry's still here. They were here earlier, I know, today. Okay? So they're in the business. They bring in a guy named John McClellan. Okay? Who brought in a guy named Sean Brady. Who brought in a guy named, you know, George Caligaris and all these other people. Right? This is a power line guys. That's a power line. So, here's what happens. John McClellan goes out there. Actually, let me just show you here. Everybody knows 2,000 people on a first name basis if you graduated high school or equivalent in your country. Do you believe that? That's absolutely true. You know 2,000 people on a first name basis. Okay? If you don't believe that, I can put a gun to your head and you will write them down. I promise you. <laughs> okay? So, in this case right here, for me to get down to Palmer's, to find down through Scott Malone and Rick Palmer, I sifted through a potential universe of 14,000 people. You know what Brent Bryson said this morning? He said it's about sifting. It's not about selling, is it? It's about sifting and sorting. So what do I do, you guys? How do I do that? I go ahead and get Richmond Flowers, and I say, I want to see your top 20 contacts, Richmond. So give me your top 20, just like that, right there on the screen. And I want to hear them. I want to get them on the phone. I want to be on a launch call. I want to be on a three-way call. I'm listening. I'm seeing who gets it, who's the best shot for me to spend my time with. All of a sudden, Paula shows up right there. Boom, Paula, I want to see your 20 best people. I immediately go down and work with Paula. I don't worry about Richmond so much anymore. I'm driving the line. I'm sifting and sorting. I'm going through that group. Boom, 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 boom. Who is it that I'm going to work with? There they are. Bam, there's the next one. And then I go down to Creech. I say to Creech, show me your best 20 people. I went down. I got in a room. I looked them all in the eyes. Nobody in the room was the people, but the guy the next day was, right? Sifting and sorting and looking, sifting, 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 sifting through those contacts. And all of a sudden, wham, you know, there's Danny and then Wilford and then the locker, Scott Malone, okay? So by the time I went six levels on this group right here, I had talked to 1% of the potential universe of contacts. It's all math, guys. It's just the law of probabilities. Why do the very best people show up? Why do the lockers show up on three, four, five, and six? Why? Because you've now sifted through a large enough potential universe of contacts that you're going to hit the best people down there. You're going to find it in your downlines as you're sponsoring. You'll get a great person, and all of a sudden you'll, they'll find another one that's even better. And you go, wow, that one's even better. Oh, that one's even better yet. That's why it happens. Have you experienced this before? New people, you're kind of maybe going, I don't know if I understand this quite. Those that have been in this thing for four or five, six months, and you've done a little bit of sponsoring, you know what I'm talking about right here, okay? So it's math, guys. You have no time to look at 2,000 people, do you? Time's your enemy. A lot of you are doing this part-time, so what do you got to do? You got to get them to offer up. You've got to get them to self-select the 20 best people. What did Paige say this morning when she put up the system? What was the first thing on the system? Make a list of 100 and it said top 20 in brackets right there. You want to get them to offer up the most successful people they know and put them in there right there. Okay? So here's what happened. John McClellan over time and pretty rapidly became a team elite. He went out there and created 15 executives. This is the second principle you must understand about this compensation plan. If you understand this next principle, you can use it to create literally massive power legs. This is how you do it right here. McClellan becomes a team of eight. Let's say Mark Mabry, all he has is John McClellan. What does that make Mark Mabry? A what? A gold executive. That's all he is. He's got one first level breakaway called John McClellan. Is that right? But John has 15 frontline breakaways underneath him. To make the math easy for me, because I was never good at it, let's say all 15 of those groups do 10,000 each, just for simplicity's sake, okay? What's Mark Mabry thinking every month? What is wrong with Mark Mabry? He can't sleep. He is freaked out. Why? Because he's a gold executive, and a gold can only reach one level. Let's say McClellan's personal group's doing 10,000. How much does Mark Mabry make? $500. He gets 5% of $10,000, which is $500. What happens if Mark Mabry goes out and just gets one more executive? Just one more executive. Now what's his title? Lapis. How deep does he get paid now? Two levels, two generations of breakaway executive groups. Voila! Mark Mabry can now tap in to John McClellan's first level, Mark's second level. If they're all doing 10,000 each, that's 150,000 in volume, 
5% of 150 would be 7,500 more. In that case, Mark Mabry would increase his pay 16 times by getting one more guy. But it's not just the 12 or 15 on John's front line, is it? It's John's second line that has at least 24, and his third line that has 48, and his fourth line that has 96, and his fifth line that has 192 executives. When you build a dynasty down deep, and it's just interesting that birds of a feather flock together. Have you ever heard that? It's true. All of a sudden, once we broke through Malone, Palmer's were super successful people. Mabry's very successful people. McClellan had just sold his medical supply company for over $6 million cash. He was retired. He got it. He wanted to do it. Birds of a feather flock together. Powerful people. All of a sudden, what happened is that we build this dynasty, we push it down, and it comes flying back up. Because of what? Because of that key feature of the plan which says you have to have width to capture the depth in our compensation structure. It creates the fear of loss. Remember, the fear of loss is a much greater motivator than the prospect of gain. Write that one down. The fear of loss is a much greater motivator than the prospect of gain. What time is it? Oh my gosh. I don't know if it is. It's not okay. We've got to finish this. Like, where's Lon? Where did he go? Is he back here? Okay, I'm just a few more minutes, but you've got to have Lon go through this, okay? This is really critical you understand this, you guys. All right. So what happened is, Mark Mabry had to become a team elite. He had to. He couldn't just sit there and let the money go back to the company every month. He didn't want his favorite charity to be new skin, right? So he eventually became a Blue Diamond and then a team elite. He had to, because he wanted to tap into that dynasty that was down there and go as deep as he could into the dynasty, right? And then what happened is Rick Palmer became a team elite. Scott Malone became a team elite. Wilford White quit. Sweet justice in this world anyway, isn't there? <laughs> Danny White and Buzz Croner became team elites. Bob Creech quit, okay? Paula Ehrlich became, and Mort became team elites right there, and Richmond Flower became a team elite. Guys, that's how you build a power line, right there. That line right there has paid me over $40,000 a month for 15 years. Is that worth a lot of money? Okay? Absolutely happened. Okay? So, I want Lon to step up quick. And Lon, just, just quickly, where is he? Come here. You're not running, you're walking. Let's go. We're out of time here, man. I want Lon to quickly cover this and just give me your example so they can see about driving lines. Lon Wardrop. One of the greatest in the game. Is this thing working here? All right. The time is short. Here's what I want to say. And I want everybody listening, because I'm not going to say a lot, but listen. Peter, you too, buddy. I mean, truly, at the end of the day, there's only one thing you got to do. One thing. That's it. We've heard some amazing things today. Amazing. Absolutely life-changing. A lot of you today come to us financially bankrupt, physically bankrupt, mentally bankrupt, spiritually bankrupt, socially bankrupt. And we have the components to fix every single one of those areas of your life if you just let us. And the words let. So the question is, the only thing you've got to do, first off, is decide you're going to do it. So you've got to do one thing and one thing only in this business, and that's recruit yourself. That's it. I understood the principles of this, okay? This thing up here is called the puzzle. I'm not even going to go through it. The thing I want you to understand is when I came in, I didn't know the compensation plan. We had no presentations. The company had been going backwards for 11 years. 22% negative growth in the United States in the year 2001. And I decided to do this thing. Okay? In the U.S. market, there was a lot of, with a lot of the leaders, there was a lot of non-belief system. And I didn't believe it at all. I believe this is the greatest opportunity. And I was willing to risk everything for it. I'd been retired for six years in another company. And a lot of people thought I brought all those people with me. I brought none, zero, with me. 
I started cold turkey from scratch. I went back to my roots in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and talked to people that I've known since 1966 and recruited them. I recruited 15 people on my front line because I asked Nathan what's the top position in the company. And honestly, the truth is, I knew two positions in the company for almost two years. Executive and team elite, and I knew nothing about any of the other positions. That's the truth. I did not understand the compensation plan. I didn't understand much about the products. I just knew the scanner was going to change the world. And I was willing to risk my homes, I had multiple homes, risk everything because I had another cash flow coming in, realizing I could lose it all. And I want you to know there has been not one day I doubted. I have never feared once doing this business at all because I realized that we were going to change lives forever. Do you really understand that? And when you can get that in your eyes and in your heart, you've got a lot of great stuff today here. Are you taking it down to here? Period. That's the end of the story. So you've got to ask yourself, are you sick and tired of being bankrupt in those categories we just talked about? Are you tired of it? Because if you're not tired of it, you won't change. There is a higher source. Rely on it. Period. Okay? Drop to your knees. Rely on a higher source. Fear and faith. Who is your master? Period. Okay? The only thing I disagreed with Harv Ecker today, I don't have fear. Zero. None. Absolutely none. Okay? Because I absolutely believe in what I'm doing and believe in what we're doing as a group and realize that the secrets of a millionaire mind, we have the capacity in this room, honestly, I believe there's people in this room that will be making a million bones a month. You will be the bank a month and more. We haven't seen what this thing's really even all about. When we're talking five and ten billion dollar company here, I think that's a joke. When we have something to affect the world forever, we have the only thing that we can, we have no competition. You know, even when Scott put up, here's our competition, I told him to put in a person that's in a coffin, a skeleton in the coffin, because there is none. So at the end of the day, all this stuff is great. It's all here for you. All, this, all these presentations are on the website. You have everything here for you. So the only thing you got to do is recruit yourself. And are you going to do it? Okay? And the last thing I want to say is this. All right? Go and do this and have fun. Love people. Don't take your life so serious. Enjoy your life. Have fun through this whole process. Okay? Start doing some great self-talk. You know, go to this great seminar that Harv Eckers invited you all to go to. Go listen to the tapes. You know, quit watching the TV. Quit doing all the things that screw up your life. If you want to lose weight, go get it done. If you want to have a better, you know, mental capacity, go get it done. If your spirituality is screwed up, fix it, okay? It's there for you. The taking's there. The opportunity is once in a lifetime. It's not, why is it that everyone else gets all the opportunities? How come Nathan is so dang lucky? How come everybody else gets all the breaks? Tonight, today is your break. This is it. Take advantage of it. Whether this message catch you at 18 or 81, it doesn't matter. In five years, we'll all be five years older. Nate, you're on. Hey. All right, guys. I need five minutes, okay? I'm going to show you five minutes here. We're going to be done with this thing. I'll get through this fast. This is one slide that we're not doing. Okay? Next slide. Okay? There we go. All right. See if we can get to the next one. Okay. This is what I did my first run. We just went through this one, you guys. I want to show you my power lines. I want to prove to you you can manufacture them. Okay? So there's a power line right there. Here's the next one, okay? Mike Greco worked for me in my real estate office in Salt Lake City when I decided to do this business in 1989. Mike has a brother named John Greco. You all know John? Yeah. Fantastic guy. John was selling pots and pans. He decided to do this business. San Diego, California. 
The day before, we went ahead and recruited, the day before the 1989 convention, we called Anthony Antonelli in Washington, D.C., running a management consulting company back there of his own little boutique firm, consulting companies on mergers and acquisitions, and we said, you need to get your butt on a plane and come to this convention. He did it. He came out of that convention in 89, September of 89, and he went home and shut his boutique down. And he went and did this thing full time, okay? He was the locker in that leg. I went to Washington. I went back there repeatedly. We worked together. I forgot about John and Mike. I just forgot about them. You go straight down to that locker, you guys, and you pound it, okay? Anthony did it. Darlene Shear was the first team elite in the country of Canada. He recruited her. She was three levels below him. She rolled all the way up to his first line, okay? James Vint, v British Columbia VC, became team elite, went out there and recruited some other Japanese team elites when Japan opened. That is the second power line. Here's another one right here, Derek Winkle. What a great guy. Started off in this industry carrying bags at the Marriott Hotel. Okay, Derek Winkle came into the business, has done a phenomenal job. Ken Belknap came into the business, the Sheranian brothers came into the business, and then they recruited the Bannisters, Peter and Karu Bannister, sitting right here on the front row, okay? Their daughter came to a piano competition in Salt Lake City, Utah. She went to the competition, and Karu showed up eventually and found out that this lady named Pam Moore had new skin products in her house. Pam told them that we were going to open up in Hong Kong soon. They were living in Hong Kong. Peter was a Cathay Pacific captain flying a 747 airplane out of Hong Kong. They ended up being the locker, okay? So we started working with them. I had meetings at their home in Hong Kong. Other people helped. We had Japanese meetings in Guam and Saipan, and we started doing this whole thing, and they were the players. They had a little friend over there by the name of Michiko Graf, who married to Bruno Graf, who recruited her cousin, a guy named... Katsumi Kaneko, okay? That line runs down a long way, guys. I mean, you know, dozens of levels of executives, team elites. Another one, Sandy Kellen. Sandy Kellen's in Phoenix, Arizona. Sandy Kellen became a blue diamond in the company. Another power line developed here. Why? Sandy would not have dinner with me, wouldn't have lunch with me. Sandy was in one of my other companies. I called him up and I said, Sandy, it's Nathan. I'm down here working at Scott Malone and all these guys in Arizona, and I thought I'd better call him. I call up uh, Sandy Kellen and said, we got a hot deal going, Sandy. You need to have come lunch with me. I got to talk to you. He says, uh, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. I said, come on, you got to eat lunch. He goes, not with you. Just like that. And I said, well, okay, if you don't want to go, how about your wife? I'll have lunch with her. He didn't like that any better. And so finally I said, well, then I'll meet her. And so I called her. He had just called her right before I called her and said, you know, don't have lunch with this guy. I get Robin on the phone, and I say, I just want to meet you and tell you what we're doing. I'll give you a videotape. It won't be 15 minutes. I gave her a little videotape called Catching the Wave that we had in those days, all right? They took it home. I thought that was the end of it. Three months later, it's midnight. My telephone rings. It's in the middle of the winter, and it's Sandy Killen. He said, my daughter's got colic. I'm up here. She can't sleep, and I'm patting her back, walking around, and I just got bored, and I threw in your tape. I said, I want to do this. I get it, okay? You never know, guys. What's going to happen from some tape you leave or something you put out there, okay? Sandy Kellen recruits a guy over there by the name of Lee Ron Lee. Let's see if I can get this thing to work, okay? Lee Ron had played baseball in Japan, and when he was there playing baseball in Japan, he used to play for the Dodgers, right? He had a little interpreter person named Shumi Ru, okay? And we recruited Shumi, and she helped us in translate and interpret and is responsible for a lot of what went on in Japan. And she recruited Fumi Sawai, who recruited another guy and another guy, and Shumi has a $5 million circle membership in this company. She's almost $10 million circle now. She's made millions. Okay, this little interpreter lady who you might have seen running around here, she is incredible. Okay, and the last one was Blake Tillotson, my other brother-in-law, an engineer who really didn't like to talk to anybody, who recruited Jeff Mack, who you heard earlier today, right? You know what Jeff was doing? Jeff was selling marital picture albums for people's weddings. He would go to the girls at the universities in Utah, and they all wanted to get married eventually, all right? They all thought they would. And so Jeff would knock on their door and say, you are a gorgeous gal, and when you get married, you're going to want to have an album ready to go. And he pre-sold wedding photo albums to people. And Jeff's so good luck, and they would always let him in, right? So Jeff did really well, you know? Well, that was Jeff Mack, but I got to tell you, Jeff didn't even know how to really present in those days. And that's what you've got to be willing to do is change. I remember one time in Clara's offices in Salt Lake City, the room we've launched a lot of these groups out of, Jeff gave the presentation, and it was a disaster. It was terrible. People were falling asleep. Craig Tillotson, my sponsor, 
pulled him upstairs in his office, and he just had to dress him down. I was in the room, and Jeff was sitting there, and he said, Jeff, that stunk. That was terrible. He said, you know what? You're just like, nee, it's monotone. No, it's really exciting. Yeah, we got a great company. He goes, your voice doesn't even change. Doesn't even do this, man. He goes, you're terrible. He goes, you know what? You need to change your personality. <laughs> I mean, he was brutal on Jeff Mack, right? And sometimes leaders have to do the hard job because you care about them more than just a little bit. You want them to change, you guys. And sometimes you need to point it out to them right to their face and say, we've got to have the hard conversation. This is a problem. You've got to change this. You need to grow in this area. And Craig did it directly. And man, has Jeff Mack changed? Holy smokes. Unbelievable. He recruits Brent Bryson, who was six levels below him. Five executives quit in between Brent Bryson and Jeff Mack. Okay? And look at Brent Bryson today. He makes over 100000 a month, right? He recruited John Emerand over in Thailand, and there's other Southeast Asian team elites there. That was my first six or seven years, guys. That was my first run in the company. Let me just describe this to you, okay? You can manufacture power lines. You learn these concepts I've taught you today, and all of a sudden you will realize that this business is not a lottery. It's not like, oh, well, that guy got lucky, and, you know, that one got lucky, and that's why they made it. That has nothing to do with it. You can't manufacture them like this by luck, okay? You can build as many power lines as you want to build. This is a business. You just learn the principles and you apply them consistently. And what's going to happen to you? You can do it as many times as you want. You want to see my second run? Here we go, right here. A guy named Dan McCormick signed up three and a half years ago. Brought in a guy named Lon Wardrop, right there, right? Paige Ripple comes in, who recruits Peggy Crock right here on the front row, who recruits Peter Levy right here on the front row, and now we're waiting to see who the next one's going to be. Okay? He's sitting right there. Okay, Russ is going to take it? Good. All right, here's another one. Steve and Melinda Campbell. They come into the business about four years ago, okay? I recruit Steve in. He says, we're going to go for it. And Steve and, and Melinda recruit the Downings, who just were recognized as Team Elites last night on the stage in the room, who recruited Sue Baliwala, that's a diamond now, on her way to Team Elite, who recruited Kara Henderson, and now Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, or Ginny Hines and Dr. Hines. There we go. Ginny, I forget her name, actually. I should know it, huh? What is it, Scott? You remember? <laughs> okay. And Dr. Hines. Okay, thank you very much. And so this is another power line that's in the making. These are brand new, guys. These aren't fully mature yet. My check's going to still go up by another 100000 a month as these groups that I started in the last three years mature. Okay? Jed Knight joins the company. Took a while. He's kind of a nephew of mine. He dodged me at all the family parties for two years. Finally, I got him. He brought in Ryan Fry right here on the front row, who brought in Charlie Patterson right there in the second row, right? Fantastic guys. Have you guys heard these guys go? They're incredible, aren't they? Who brought in Mike Rott? Mike's here someplace in the room, right? Who's brought in other people over in Israel, and that thing's now spreading everywhere. That is a power line, okay? And there's others. Don't be offended if your name's not here. There's actually multiple branches of Blue Diamonds off lots of these lines. I'm just giving you an example. Kenton Worthington comes into the business. Is he amazing? Kenton Worthington has more natural charisma than anybody I've ever met in my life. He is incredible. He's got a God-given gift to him, and he will be absolutely massive in this company as he continues to grow. Okay? Kari Vasi comes in the business, and he does phenomenal things. Virtually all of Hungary is underneath Kari Vasi, a new country we opened about a year ago, and it's spread now into Romania through these other people on the bottom here, and that thing is going, okay, doing tremendous volume. And finally, Greg Kagiyama, who I recruited several years ago, who ended up recruiting some people in Japan, Saigusa-san, Takahashi-san, who brought in Kawamitsu-san, okay, Masami Light, and others, and that's another power line, okay? That's my second run. I can do this at will. If I decide right now I'm going to go do five more power lines, I could do it over the next five years. I could decide if I want my check to go to 500000 a month, I can do it. It's just mechanics. It's just principles, you guys. It's not a lottery. It's not about luck. You know, it's not about some like guesswork or something and somebody just falls in it. Maybe they do once, but they don't recreate it, okay? You can manufacture these things. You can literally, if I want to keep working, I can just keep making power lines one after another after another. You can do the same thing, okay? This has been, I think, the best conference we've ever had. It's been amazing, hasn't it? Okay?
Now, as Lon said, all this is, you guys, this is all action now. This is now you, okay? This is the hot bath that's over. And tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up, and you've got to decide what you're going to do, all right? I really pray you make the right decision, and you change your life, and you do this business. Thank you very much.